this is Justin from the Dynamail project, and in this screencast I'm going to go step by step on how to install Dynamail. Um, to do this we're going to need a few things. I'm going to do the majority of the work through um, my web browser. I'm going to have a text editor open just to take notes, um, just to do uh, just some things down. Uh, we won't be doing any editing of um, configuration files or anything like that because to install Dynamail you don't need to. Um, my website is uh, backed by um, a cPanel. Um, if you don't have a cPanel powered uh, hosting account, um, you can still do this installation, no problem. You'll just be do using different tools. So, if, for example, I'm going to be using the file browser within cPanel just because it's so easy and it's there. And you have a cPanel backed website, you already have it. Um, if you don't have that, you can just use uh, like an FTP program. Um, if you do have a different um, control panel uh, backing your website, um, the, the tools I'm going to use might still be there just in a different form. Um, so let's get to it. Um, I'm in my browser right now, I'm just at the Dynamail homepage. Um, what I need to do is go to the download section of Dynamail, and there's two things that I need to download. Um, the first is uh, the distribution itself, and the second is a helper script that uh, does a little bit of work for me so I don't have to. So. If I scroll down here, I'm looking for Dynamail 6, and the uh, download link for the actual distribution is this guy right here. So it's labeled here, Dynamail 6.0.0 stable. Um, so I'm just going to click that and uh, start the download. Great. It is uh, kind of big, so it might take a couple minutes to download. While that's downloading, I'm going to look at that page again, and the helper script link is just below. It's called uncompress underscore data dot CGI. I'm going to have to download this too. So um, for this one, I'm going to right click and just go to save link as because um, I need to download it and then we're going to upload both these files to our um, website. So let's save that. Fantastic. If you by any chance like just click on the link and you open it up and you just see a bunch of code, um, if you're not, um, just you know save it and uh, you know, save it to your uh, desktop. No worries. Okay, great. So once uh, the distribution and the helper script has been downloaded, we're going to switch gears. I'm going to go back to my web browser. I'm going to go to my next tab right here, which is just my cPanel. And inside the cPanel, we're doing, going to do a couple things. We're going to um, upload the two files we just downloaded to our website. We're going to um, make a MySQL database for Dynamo. And later, we'll make um, some cron jobs to, uh, for Dynamo, basically. So let's uh, let's do the the upload of the files that we just downloaded. So in in cPanel in the little find area, I'm going to look for the file browser. Let's see. Okay. okay, so it's called File Manager here. So here it is. I'm going to click on it. It's going to bring up this little modal menu and ask me, please select the directory you're open. I usually start in my home directory, and then there's a uh, checkbox to show hidden files. I like having that too. It's uh, for me, because I'm more advanced user, I guess, it's, it's just easier for me to know um, that I start in my home directory and I can see all my files. So once you uh, make your own decision, uh, press go, and that will launch you into the uh, file manager. So the file manager works a lot like an FTP program. In my uh, previous screencast, when I show you how to install .ml, I usually use an outside FTP program. Um, in this screencast, I'm trying something a little different. We're just going to use the, the file manager that comes with cPanel. Just because you, you might already have it if you have a cPanel powered website. And it's one less uh, piece of software that you need to download and find that kind of thing. Okay, great. Um, for my demo for this installation, um, we're going to install that amount in your CGI dashboard. Um, most uh, websites these days, you can install um, CGI scripts wherever you like, but I'm going to use the CGI dashboard just because it's there and keep everything straight. So, in the left hand menu where it shows all my different files, We'll scroll down a little bit and find the one called public underscore HTML. And once I find that, I'm going to click on it. And it's going to show me all the directories that are in that one, uh, in your public HTML directory. And there's one called cgi-bin, which is great, because that's the one I'm looking for. So I'm going to click on that as well. And it's going to show me in the right-hand side all the files that are in there. And right now, there isn't any. And I want to put some. So I'm going to go to this button that says Upload. And that's going to open yet another tab and gives me a little form widget to browse and this is where I can select both that uh, Dynamail distribution and the, uh, the helper script. So let's do that right now. I'm going to do the helper script first. 
I'm going to hit Browse, and I'm going to go into, for me, I'm on Mac OS X, so I'm going to go into my Downloads directory, and those are the two uh, files I just downloaded. So let's select the helper script first, because it's really small. And once you, once you select it, I believe, yep, the file manager will just start uploading it. And it says it is now complete, which is great. And let's go back to the Browse button and select the distribution itself. Great. And as you see, it's giving me a little, little dialog menu showing me how long it's going to take. Um, so the, uh, the the distribution is uh, it's it's 20 megs at the moment. So it it will take you know depending on your uh, connection and your speed um, a couple minutes to uh, upload fully. Um, once uh, both the helper script and the data mail distribution itself is are uploaded, you can click this. I think this is back to your CGI dashboard right here, and that'll close the window and refresh our view of our CGI dashboard directory, and that's great. The next thing we'll have to do is change the permissions of that helper script called uncompressed underscore dot CGI. So I want to select the uncompressed underscore data dot CGI helper script. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to go all the way where it says change permission, a little key. And I'm going to um, toggle these checkboxes so the permissions over here where they say 644 now, I want to change it to 755. And long story short, to do that, you just uh, select all of the checkboxes there in this last row, um, and it'll execute. Just like that. And once you've done that, you have to press the button labeled Change Permissions. Fantastic. Okay, so now we've changed the permissions to the uncompressed um, underscore data that CGI helper file. We need to now run that file um, via our web browser, which means we have to visit that file or the script. So let's do that. I'm going to open up another tab. And um, the URL to um, my website is actually datademo.com. And I know that this is in my CDI dashboard. And the name of the script is uncompressed underscore data.cgi. So let's string that all together. So it's datademo.com in my CGI dashboard. And the script is called uncompressed data.cgi. So I uh, enter that, it will run the script. Start my adventure. It will uncompress that uh, distribution. It will change a bunch of permissions, move a few things around, and hopefully, once that's all done, it will present me a link to enter the actual installer. Great, once I see this enormous link on the bottom, I just have to click on it. I am in the Donna Mail installer. Awesome. So since this is a new installation of Dynamo, we're not upgrading from any other um, previous installation. I'm going to make sure this is checked installation and hit the big green button uh, labeled continue. Great. And I'll present it with a small form with things to fill out. Um, the first thing it wants to know is where to put its dot data files directory. Now this directory is where Datamail uh, stores a whole bunch of things, um, temporary files, its configuration file, um, and uh, a, lot, a lot of its logs. So I'm going to keep this on auto. Basically you want to set this in a place where Datamail will have permissions to write and that's not available um, publicly. So I don't want to be able to navigate to this via my web browser and be able to see the file. That's a big no-no. Um, so Dynamail has guessed my home directory, which is perfect. And inside that home directory, it's going to create that .data files directory. So that's awesome. If you don't like that idea or want it in a different place, you can manually change it to whatever you want. I'm going to select back auto because it's what what it choose, chose was great. So nothing to do there. Easy enough. And now down to the configuration. The first thing it wants me to do is set the Dynamail URL. Um, basically, um, we want to make sure this is, um, since we're installing in my CGI dashboard, that uh, it's looking for a directory called data, and it's looking for a script name called mail.cgi. Just double check that this looks good to you, looks good to me. Great. The second thing it's looking for is something called the support files directory. Um, the support files directory is the directory that data mail will um, install all its static um, files, things like images and uh, cascading style sheets, JavaScript files, things like that. 
It'll also install um, all the support files needed for its WYSIWYG editors. So it needs both the, um, the server Epson path and the corresponding URL. Lots to take in, it's not so difficult. So basically what you need to do is just tell Datamail where your public HTML directory is. And like the data files directory, it gives a pretty good guess. So if we look at first found my home directory and then found my public HTML directory, and that's where it's going to put this data mail support files directory. No problem. And then it looks for um, the URL to my website, which is datademo.com. And then it's going to say that these two, if I, if I put place files in this directory, I can access them in this directory. So um, the default values that it gives me works great. So moving on, the next thing it wants to know is my Dynamail root password. Now this root password is used to um, both create new mailing lists and also it allows you to um, basically log into any existing mailing list, which is great. Each mailing list also has a list password which only works with that particular list. But if you want to control all your lists and you want to know just one password, the Dynamail root password is what it is. So I'm going to pick one. I'm going to make, let's see here, I'll pick a very simple one. Um, demo. And if you don't get it right, it'll tell you, which is great. Great. So just uh, enter your password and retype it just to make sure it's correct. Moving on. Okay. So Dynamail needs to save its list, list subscribers, its archives, its settings, uh, things like that in um, some sort of database. Um, so usually that means for most people a MySQL database or there's other choices. So if you like PostgreSQL better, you may do that. Um, there's also support for SQLite, which we don't recommend for um, production, but if you're just testing out Dynamail, works really great. The cool thing about SQLite is all this other information you don't have to fill out. But let's go ahead and install Dynamail with a MySQL um, database. So right now we don't have one. So we have to go back into our uh, control panel, our cPanel, and create one. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to just switch tabs. We're going to go from the installer tab, and I'm going to go to my cPanel. And back into that find um, box, I'm going to erase where it says file, and I'm just going to go look for, I'm going to look for MySQL. So MySQL. I can spell it correctly. Great, so it gives me a couple things I found, and the one I want really is one called MySQL Database Wizard. So I'm gonna click on that. Awesome, so um, step one is to create a database. Perfect, that's exactly what I need to do. Um, and it asks you to create, create the name, make, it, make the name. So I'm just gonna, for shorthand, I'm gonna call this um, DM. So the whole entire database name is data demo underscore DM. And I'm gonna click next step. Great, so now it wants a user for my database. And I'm just gonna call my um, username the same as the database name. So it's gonna be data demo underscore DM. And then it wants a password, and it's gotta be um, pretty strong. And luckily for me, it makes a little password generator. So all you have to do is click that button. It gives you this ridiculous password. Um, select it, copy it, say so you copied it, and click the one that says use password. Now, so I don't forget all this, um, that's why I have a little text editor uh, handy. I'll open up a new um, text editor and I'll just write that down. Okay, that's the password. Great. And, uh, oh good. Let's create user. So I'll click that button that says create user. It says added user data demo underscore DM password. Great. So I'm gonna again copy that user and just put it in my text box and my text editor. So that's also the, the name of my database for me. So my name of my database is Donnell underscore DM. The name of my user is data demo underscore DM. And the password is this uh, random string letters and numbers and symbols. Perfect. I'm gonna go back to my browser. And uh, where it says uh, you know for the privileges, just uh, select the big checkbox that says all privileges and click the next step. And we are set. Great. So just to um, round up, what we did is we used the MySQL database wizard to both create an, a database and a user. Um, in my example, I just give them the same name because that's simple. And we create a password. And when it asks for the privileges, we set all. 
great we're actually okay great so let's go back to our installer and we're gonna plug in all that information in. so for database um, it's data demo underscore DM for me and the username remember I had the same same username as my database name so we'll pop that in and for password is that random string of letters and number great copy great and if you want to test and make sure you copy and paste it all that and did um, and you create your database quickly there's a little button that will let you test that so all you have to do is press it and it should tell you great um, this one says my connection is successful so if I didn't um, copy and paste everything right uh, and I just click that button it'll say connection is not successful and give me a bunch of a bunch of gobbledygook. good so uh, that's not right so I'm gonna copy the right password paste it in there and just test it once more great so we're all set with the back end not too hard and then back to the plugins and extensions so this is pretty cool um, Datamail comes with a whole bunch of plugins and extensions it extends basically what you can do with Datamail and a lot of them are checked by default because they're just so useful um, so we have the mailing monitor plugin we'll, uh, we'll get back to that one in a little bit because we have to install the Chrome job for it um, there's one for like, change program with password, screencast, view logs, tracker Tracker is a good one, that's a whole screencast in itself. Um, bridge, bounce handler, schedule mailings, things like that. Um, some of them, as they say, require a Chrome job, so we're not going to cover them here, but I will do an additional screencast covering um, some of these in a later series. Because um, some of them, like the bounce handler, require you to set up um, additional things, in this case, a new um, pop through email address. Not too hard, but let's move right along. Great. The last thing you can do is uh, set if Datamel is to use a uh, WYSIWYG editor in its, uh, its control panel. We're going to if you don't want to, just uncheck that, but I think it's a pretty good idea. And Datamel comes with three different uh, WYSIWYG editors it, it um, supports, two of which are installed by default. We do not recommend installing FCK editor, it's just so old. And it also has a file browser uploader called KC Finder, which is also installed by default. So, we're all set. I'm going to quickly look through all this information. Okay, auto. Um, it means it's putting that, that data files directory in my home directory. Perfect. It successfully um, guessed my program URL correctly. Good. It's putting um, that support files directory, both the absolute path and the URL. Looks good. Um, I set a .mail root password. Perfect. Um, I put in my database information, which we just created. We tested it and it worked out great and then we uh, looked at the plugs and extensions things look good we're gonna we're, we might revisit that in a later thing and we're gonna install the WYSIWYG get first okay great so once you're all set and you're comfortable and you're you know deep breath you can just click this green button that says configured on the mail and uh yeah and let uh, the installer do its work good once the screen has refreshed it'll uh, show you running along all the things it's done and uh, in our case they were all successful so every time it had something it's doing it's a success and the last thing it said is installation configuration complete which is awesome um, what you need to do is just scroll down a little bit and where it says move the data install directory you want to click that button um, down the middle won't run unless that directory is no more that's so that um, someone nefarious doesn't come in and try to reconfigure it out of That would be horrible. So let's let's move that. So it moves it out of the way and it changes its permission so it's not um, executable, which is perfect. Um, it also tells you, the installer also tells you where the configuration file is. If you would like to go back and um, manually configure some of the more advanced features of Dynamo. Um, again, we're not going to go through that, but it's there um, for another screencast. Um, I might touch upon that. And once you're ready to use Dynamail, you can press the button that says Start Working with Dynamail. So great, um, welcome to Dynamail. Um, this is the screen you'll get um, once you install Dynamail. Um, and hey, let's let's set up our new mailing list. So if you scroll down, uh, check the checkbox as I agree to the GPL license. Um, enter your Dynamail password and click the green button that says set a new mailing list. Sure. And I'm just going to go this through this pretty quickly. Um, 
I'm gonna select a mailing list name. This can be changed at any time. And set a list short name is just a shorthand uh, reference that the program uses internally. Um, the name also uh, shows up on things like confirmation uh, links and email messages. So, you know, think about it for a second. I'm going to call mine an example. Just simple. And then uh, set a, a list password. So this password is used only to access this one list. Um, and again, if you want to access any of the mailing lists that you create, you can always use that data mail root password. Great. Um, and then it wants to set a list owner email address. The list owner email address is basically all, what all the email addresses sent from your list will be sent on behalf of. So I created an email address before called list owner. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. And then the last three things that uh, Dynamail wants is a list description, a privacy policy, and a physical address. So I'm gonna write a very small description, a very small privacy policy. any small, very small physical address. Um, I do urge you, if you're creating an actual list, to um, expand on your privacy policy and put an actual physical address in there. But for the time being, I'm just doing a demo. We're just going to put these there. Once you're all set and everything looks good, uh, click the button that says create your list. Superb. And great. Everything was uh, created. And just log into your mailing list. Awesome, and uh, welcome. This is the list control panel of Dynamail. Um, and the initial screen you get is the screen to send a message. So if I wanted to, I can just type out um, yeah, simple message, whatever. If I wanted an image, I can you know, browse for one, whatever. Um, so that's how you, you know, send a message using Dynamail. So there's one more thing, this is advanced, but I encourage everyone to do this as well, is we're going to set the cron job for our mailing monitor plugin. And this is a good example and introduction to basically how you set all the cron jobs for all the different plugins. Okay, so where are the plugins located? If you see this left hand side, there's a big huge menu, and if you scroll down, one of the headings is plugins, and this is where you'll find all the plugins we just installed. Because we're pretty awesome. <laughs> one of them is labeled mailing monitor, and I want you to click on that. Great. What the mailing monitor does is it um, makes sure that your mass mailings are uh, running successfully. Um, usually, mass mailings will take um, it could be a couple hours to um, complete, um, depending on how fast you can send email messages. Um, some people, like me, on this uh, cPanel backed website, can only send around 500 messages messages an hour. So you have to kind of uh, slow down your 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 mass mailings so they fit below your limit. And thankfully, Dotamail does that um, by default. Um, and the mailing monitor just makes sure that the uh, that that mass mailing is going fine, and so you don't have to constantly check it manually, which is great. So let's set that cron job. So I want you in the screen to go below where it says mainly run mailing monitor and then it says curl command example for cron job. Perfect. All you have to do is copy this uh, string of stuff. Copy. And we're going to go for the last time, we're going to go back to our, our, our cPanel. So it's in this uh, tab right here. And I'm just going to go back to cPanel since we're done with the MySQL database with it. And once you're into the, the C panel, I want you to go back to the find box. And I want you to type in cron job, C R O N J O B. And once you get a, a result called cron jobs, I want you to click it. Great. And this is in the C panel where you set the cron job. And a cron job is basically just um, a task you ex execute every n minutes, hours, days, months, whatever you like. Um, for this one, we're going to um, have it run every five minutes. So under where it says add a new cron job, where it says common settings, you want to select every five minutes. Perfecto. And where it says command, you just want to paste in that string that we uh, copied from the mailing monitor plugin. 
and you want to click the button, add new Chrome job. Good job. All right. So I'm going to go back to my Dynamo and we're going to review what we were able to do. Um, so first off, we downloaded Dynamo and its helper script. We then uploaded Dynamail in the helper script using the file manager built inside cPanel. We changed the permissions of the helper script. We then ran the helper script, which uh, unpacked the distribution and got the installer all set for us. We then uh, filled out the installer and created a new database. We um, then uh, used the installer to configure Dynamail, which was successful. Good job, everybody. And then we uh, actually visited Dynamail and we created new mailing lists. We checked out the list control panel briefly. I showed you where the plugins are located and we visited one of the plugins called Mailing Monitor. And finally, we set one of the cron jobs for the Mailing Monitor, which is a good template on how to set all the other cron jobs for all the other plugins. So um, good job, everybody. I want to you know, thank you for taking the time and checking out this screencast. Um, please, if you have any questions, um, if I didn't go over anything um, clearly, um, let me know. Uh, post something on the boards or uh, comment on this video and we'll, we'll get it figured out. Um, look for additional screencasts that go through um, some of the other plugins. I want to do a screencast on the, on the Tracker plugin, which I think is awesome, and the Bounce Handler plugin, which I think is essential, and the, the Bridge plugin, which I think uh, really is one of the, the best plugins for extending um, data, data mail and basically allows you to have discussion and lists if you like. Um, until then, um, thanks for watching again and um, look for those other screencasts.